and welcome to Inside EVs. Today is gonna to be pretty interesting. We're not skidding around the racetrack, burning tires like we normally do. However, we are talking about tires from inside of my kitchen. Let's talk about Goodyear tires. And the point of this conversation isn't just about Goodyear tires, it's about all tires, the general conversation about what needs to go into tires for electric and autonomous vehicles going forwards. And I had the opportunity to talk with Chris Helsel, who is the CTO, Chief Technology Officer of Goodyear Tires, about the future of tire technology and where we are today. And just to be totally transparent, the whole conversation started because of the Model S hitting a 402 mile EPA range rating on Goodyear tires. And Goodyear reached out to us and said, hey, look at this cool thing. A lot of it's down to our tire technology. Would you like to know more? And of course I was like, yes, I want to know more. I love uh, roasting tires, skidding around, but I also love efficiency and range. And the largest factor of this, or at least one of the largest factors, comes into tire manufacturing. So I got to get real nerdy, real technical about tires with Chris. Now, we have a written component to this article as well, to this video as well, on our InsideEVs.com channel. So take a look in the description of this video if you haven't yet, because Dominic wrote an awesome piece on some of the technical details talked about in this video. So we first started out learning what are really important challenges to overcome when creating a tire for an electric vehicle. And the first that comes to mind, of course, is overall noise. Again, you don't have an internal combustion engine creating a noise frequency to drown out a lot of these tire uh, noises from hitting bumps. And so one of the pieces of technology that goes into making electric vehicle tires is using foam on the inside. And this absorbs some of the sound, some of the, the boominess you get from creating a tire with air in the middle next to a wheel. And so you'll notice a lot of OEM tires, especially on Tesla vehicles, have foam attached to the underside of the tread to absorb some of that sound. It's relatively cheap, doesn't weigh much, but that's another thing as well is weight. When you have a, a wheel that's rotating, a wheel and tire, it's rotational mass, which means the faster you go, the harder it is to slow it down, the harder it is to speed it up. So rotational weight is really important to minimize. And so what Goodyear does is they use special compounds, special materials on their tires that make them lighter. So the car will perform better, it will have more range, and it's easier for it to accelerate. And speaking of acceleration, one of the key things with electric vehicles, as we all know, is they create a ton of torque. So you'll notice, for example, in the Hyundai Kona on their Nexen tires, I forget what they use from the factory, not very grippy. Whenever you floor it, it just roasts the tires from a start. I mean, you just leave the 11s and tire smoke whenever you go. So what Goodyear's tried to do is they've tried to balance high torque with high tire longevity. Of course, you can put a really sticky piece of rubber on there like a racing slick, but you may only get 1,500 or 2,000 miles out of it on a, on a set of tires driving normally, which is crazy. Um, and then on the other side, you also need a high range, so you need low rolling resistance. So it's sort of this balance of trade-offs that you have to go through with creating a high grip for a acceleration perspective, but also low drag for a range perspective. And so Goodyear, you know, Chris was very open about, look, these are challenges that they're still facing today. A lot of it comes down to tire pressure. A lot of it comes down to the correct tire sizing for the wheel. And so that's a trade-off that you make. But the tires that come on the Model S, those are really a good trade-off between acceleration. You'll notice the car has almost no wheel spin off the line, but also achieves that 402 mile EPA range rating. So we learned a lot about how manufacturers select their tire pressure recommendations and things like this. So with a Model S, for example, it's the car we really focused on. The car is heavy, so you need one, a pretty high tire pressure to hold that thing up, especially in dynamic situations. But a higher tire pressure also helps with lowering rolling resistance. It keeps the tire expanded so it doesn't collapse with the weight under it as much because that energy loss by the tire folding every time it moves, that adds up into basically loss of energy and it heats the tire up and that's how it goes. So if you run a higher tire pressure, it means you have a little bit less contact patch on the ground, 
means the tire isn't flexing as much as you're rolling and you'll have more range. The downside, of course, is when you throw it into a corner or slam on the brakes, the tire's not able to work as much for you. So it's not as able to flex and stick to the pavement. And so what Goodyear did with Tesla is it's basically an all out battle negotiation to say, okay, we're gonna run this PSI. It's a balance for range and efficiency. And so the Teslas are usually in that 42 to 44 PSI range recommended from the factory. Of course, if you're gonna drive it more aggressively, you may want a little bit more contact patch or you may want more stiffness and then you can adjust accordingly. But the manufacturer recommended number is what has to be done when they do the EPA range testing. Another factor to getting good range isn't just about tire pressure and tire tread design, it's about the aerodynamics of the tire. And so you'll notice, especially on the Tesla Model Y performance, that the tire almost looks undersized for the wheel. And what that does is two things. It allows the tire to stay stretched, eliminating that, that flexing we were talking about around corners, but it also helps for aero. It means the tire's not getting in the way as much of the air. And believe it or not, a huge factor of range comes from wheel and tire aero design. For example, you take a Model 3 on the stock 20 inch performance wheels and it can do like 235, 240 miles at 70 miles per hour. You take one on aero wheels and it can do like 280 miles at the same speed. So it's a huge factor these wheel and tire aero makes and tire aero especially is a huge factor into this. So we know what goes into making a good tire for EVs. You need relatively high grip, especially for acceleration. You need to have relatively low rolling resistance. You need to have good aero and a relatively aggressive tread just for all season ability. And then a lot of that goes into the crazy compounds and makeups of all of the polymers and things that goes into the rubber. And we didn't get too into that. If you guys are interested, I'm happy to learn more, do a really in-depth technical uh, comparison of what goes into the rubber to make it specifically good for these things. Um, but overall, those are the points that you need to achieve. So we're kind of there. We have really good tire technology um, with, with pneumatic tires, but what happens for the future of tires? Well, before we get into different compounds and makeups of the actual tire using airless systems, for example, we need to talk about autonomous vehicles. These pose an entirely new challenge for owners and operators of these vehicles. Because again, it's not a car that's gonna be parked in your driveway that you're checking on every 5,000 miles, for example. These are gonna be in big fleets, potentially have no human eyes on the tires. So there's one specific component that I wanna single out in this video that I think is crazy revolutionary and that is tread depth sensing. Of course, right now we have logic that can look at tires heat and tire pressure, but there is no such sensor on the market that can look at tread depth to see the tire life left. And as you guys know, tires change their behavior based on from when they're new to when they hit the wear bars. And so autonomous systems need to be programmed to know how much tread is left on that tire uh, so that they can perform differently in the way that they're driving the cars. It's something we humans do naturally. If we feel that the tire isn't giving enough grip, for example, we can back off. We can feel a little, uh, little flex in the tire as they start to wear down. But autonomous systems, they won't know. It's just ones and zeros to them. So this is a sensor that Chris and his team are working on that goes on the inside of the tire to transmit the tread depth into the autonomous vehicle systems and it helps with two primary components. The first is, of course, training the system to drive differently based on tread depth remaining. Of course, the car is going to have more grip when the tires are brand new and that will lessen as they go down. The car needs to be aware of this. And secondly, it helps fleet operators know when to change tires. Uh, autonomous vehicles typically are going to be electric and quite heavy and they're going to have relatively high tire wear compared to a really lightweight car that we know. It's, you know you, it's the, the Miata versus suburban tire life thing. And so telling the fleet operator how much tread life is left on those tires allows them to maximize the amount of time driven on that set of tires for, for efficiency as well as cost savings. And then it will alert the fleet operator when to change tires on the car. And it'll also change the driving behavior of the car. So overall, that is crazy revolutionary technology. I can't wait to see it implemented into the future of autonomous vehicles. Lastly, we briefly touched on some future product, which is gonna be the next generation of tires. We've had air-filled pneumatic tires for a really long time. 
but what's to come? And so I can't reveal too many details, but Goodyear is working on some airless solutions, basically some honeycomb looking things on the inside. They're gonna have a new uh, tires designed specifically for autonomous and electric vehicle applications. There's a lot of material sciences breakthroughs that still need to be made, and it's just gonna be crazy. Tires have been relatively the same for the last 70, 80, 90 years, we're about to see that all change in over the next 10 to 20. It's going to be really interesting, and I never knew tires could be so exciting to talk about. So if you want some more of the technical details, this was just a verbal overview of some of the things you need to think about with tires, what's going to go on in the industry, definitely take a look at the link in the description of this video where we dive deeper into the technical components of tires. Thanks for watching.